Hey, this is Brian Steele. You're listening to Without Your Head, the Creature Boy. Without your head. All right, welcome to the Station of Decapitation. Without your head, I am Nasty Neil. I'm joined by Duckman, but he's a little low at the moment. Yeah, it's hard to hear me. Well, I can hear you fine now. Okay. Very low. And we're joined right off the bat here by Kristen Dalton. I say right off the bat, we're 20 minutes late, but... Hey, no <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well, thank you. Excellent. Well, everybody what? know. Hmm? Watching the sunset, I am. The sunset? Oh, you're, yeah. on the, you're on the other side of the country. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm at Cape Cod. It's dark as can be over here. It's dark here. Hmm. And now, uh, let me bring up the, co- the cottage is available now on video on demand and DVD. But uh, I think you were asking where we are. I'm in Cape Cod, and Duckman, he's around Chicago. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, the cottage is available to order from Amazon and dot com, and then it's coming out, uh, I believe, on the twenty sixth at all the Walmart stores. Nice. Now, uh, you know, it's also video demand. Do you think that's uh, kind of like yeah. the future for uh, for movies for people to be able to watch them? So a lot of people watch stuff online. Uh, well, I feel like it because, you know, everybody has big flat screen TVs at home or their computers that they're walking around with. Nobody really, you know, they don't seem to be going to the theaters as much as they used to. So it's, uh, you know, I don't think it uh, matters. It, it's not looked at any differently than it's going to theaters. The only reason I go to theaters is to see a really big, huge, you know, Superman, superhero, Iron Man type of movie. Yeah, a bunch of special okay. effects. Uh, what was it like uh, working with David Arquette? Um, awesome. David Arquette is, he's so, well, he's so unique. What a unique being he is. He's very, uh, you know, his role was super creepy. Mm-hmm. So I, when I was on the set with him, he was in his super creepy mode, which was fun. He's eccentric, you know? I like that. He's an artist. He's interesting. He's different. And he just, you know, he doesn't walk the same straight line everybody else does. <laughs> he yeah. definitely walks to the beat of his own tune, which I love. He was definitely creepy in the film, and it's a definitely a different role than uh, used to seeing him in. Yeah, yeah. I think it's some of the best work I've seen him do because of that. You know, it felt really grounded and real and definitely very creepy. You think that helped in the movie because people kind of know him as kind of a nice guy and that kind of really plays into to the idea of the movie and that character, that he seems like a normal person and then... Not. Oh, definitely, because he plays, he usually can be a little bit more lighthearted and goofy and stuff like that, and this is not the case in this movie at all. You know, it's definitely serious, and so it's unexpected, and it's uncomfortable. You know, it's it's awkward and uncomfortable and creepy. It's it's really cool. I, I thought he did some great work. I thought he was super creepy. Yeah. And the whole idea of the, you know, um, that I originally was thinking of was, Charles Manson and his harem, which, you know, I just love. I love that whole idea that, you know, how someone could be so charming that they could get women Manson. who are young girls to do their bidding. It's, it's just an awesome, cool idea. I love it. When, when, you, read the like scri- when you read the script, is that, is that what stuck out to you? Well, I first uh, kind of... Well, you know, I was developing the project first, and I was watching the Charles Manson documentary and uh, watching uh, Alfred Hitchcock uh, weekend of Alfred Hitchcock movies. And then, um, so I had that sort of idea in my head and got together with the writer, Nick Antosca, and then he had this real story that actually happened to him of the guy moving in. In the, when he was a kid in the backyard of his house. And so we just sort of put the ideas together. And I knew that I wanted to have um, two stepdaughters and a baby, so I asked him to write that in. And I knew who I wanted to hire for the girls, so you know I asked him to write that. I wanted to have as many young hot girls as possible, of course. And... Um, and uh, so I had to write in all these roles for people that I knew, you know, were... were talented and that would do it, and that... Um, it started out being more of a smaller project and then just kept growing and growing. Mm-hmm. And even one of the girls that nobody knows is actually my little sister. Ah. Now, some people might not know you're not only uh, an actor in the film, you're, you're also the producer, I believe? That's right. I am a producer. That's right. Mm-hmm. Now, how did you get involved in that? Uh, was that something you always wanted to do? Or? 
Um, yeah, you know, I did this movie called A Dangerous Place, and I co-produced it. And as I was sort of learning all the ropes, that's sort of an on Meets Anthrax deal movie. And then the next movie I did was Last Day on Earth, and I produced that, and it was very low budget, but I did it, you know, from top to bottom and really, you know, um, uh, got my teeth doing that project. And, um, and then when I had this project and I was developing it, I uh, called up my friend Bettina O'Mara and um, asked her to join me and help me out. And, and so she came along and we raised the money. And I, let me see, I was thinking of the project in at the end of November and then in December Nick wrote it. And in February I, I got some half the money and got Bettina aboard and we were filming by June. And now here we are. Now, did you think of David Arquette, or how, how did he get involved in the movie? He was the first person. We, um, we gave it to Joker Films, um, Tim uh, and Nolan over there, and they, they were friends with David Arquette, and they gave it to him. He was the first person they thought of and the first person they gave it to, and he loved the script and wanted to do it right away. So, yeah. Now, do you think that's uh, what kind of made the movie relatable and scary is that it take, takes place at someone's home and, you know, anyone could uh, rent out a room or a cottage to somebody? You never know really who they are. Definitely. You know, I think that this film doesn't have as much, um, as much like, horror and stabbing and blood as some people would like. Um, but what it does have is a lot of that real stuff, you know, when you're home alone or you've made a mistake and someone's out back and, you know, black, dark windows and, you know, and things going on that you're not sure of and, you know, being in a very vulnerable position. And so there's a lot of tension in that way. So. What are you saying, Duck Man? I said psychological. We have That's duckling. right. It's a psychological thriller. I can barely hear him. I was like, is that the little duckling man? What's Sorry that voice that. I hear? Just keep him bound in the closet. <laughs> it's hard to, see, hard to hear from him. Uh, what, would, what would be some of your favorite scenes in the movie? There's, like you said, a lot of very awkward scenes, like the dinner scene, and then uh, really scary scenes, kind of like uh, when, when she sees him with, with the baby, which is in the trailer, so I'm not spoiling it. Right, right, right. Um, yes, the dinner scene was very awkward, and, you know, dinner scenes for real can be awkward, so I found that interesting, and I loved having the cat. This cat and this baby both were brilliant. I mean, literally, this cat was, you know, I would say something, and the cat would look at me and go, meow, and I was just like, yes, of course. That's, it, it, was, uh, it was a very talented cat. And the same with the baby. The baby was, um, uh, you know, just a fluke that we got this baby. We we ordered the baby from the photograph, <laughs> didn't even interview the baby, and this baby came on the set. We were filming, and I swear the baby was just all, la, 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 oh, mama, and then they cut, and the baby would stop playing and look at the director and wait for action again, and then be like, la, 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 la. It was just like the cutest little baby. Um, so my favorite scene actually would be with Victor Brown in the kitchen. Is that giving it away? I don't know. I don't think so. I liked it. Nah. Yeah. But you because that 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 was from my from my kitchen when I was little. That reminded me of you know what happened to me. I'd have to walk downstairs in the middle of the night to get food or anything, and we didn't have any curtains on our windows. And, yeah. So. Yeah. Now, you yourself are you, are you a fan of uh, of, of thrillers of uh, psychological thrillers? Oh yeah, that's why I was spending my weekend watching all the Hitchcock movies. Definitely, I love psychological thrillers. I love horror. I love sci-fi. I'm a total science nerd geek. So yeah. Yeah. Would you like to continue uh, uh -huh. making them? Uh yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, right now, I am developing two projects. One is a TV series, sort of a uh, genesis of man, alien kind of a film. And then the other one is a film based on a book that I got the rights to from uh, this writer, right, sci-fi, Maximilian de Lafayette. So, yeah, I'm, I love the genre. Definitely planning on making more. Each one gets better and better, you know, as I grow, exactly. as I learn. 
Now you mentioned earlier that you love uh, Charles Manson, which is a great <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> I find him very interesting. I don't know if I love him as a person. Right, right. Yeah. Do you like his music? <laughs> it's wrong Manson, baby. But, uh, you know, I was just wondering, uh, have you always, like, uh, been interested in that kind of thing? Because some people, uh, their family might think there's something weird, or, or, or uh, friends of theirs might think it's weird. If you find something interesting, even if you... It doesn't mean, like, you really actually like Manson, but you do find him interesting. Right. I, it sounds like you have some experience with this. I, well, actually, my family's different. Uh, my mom used to take me to the drive-in when I was six and go see Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But a lot of my friends were different. They weren't allowed to see any of these movies. Yeah. You know what? I try not to worry too much about what people think about me. Um, because, you know, each one of us being unique and different is a beautiful thing. And that's, that's how we get... Um, Art made is by being unique and different. If we were all the same and we all thought the same, and you know, we'd all be a bunch of cookie cutters. So that's no good. Exactly. And speaking of art, you also do uh, your own actual art, and that's uh, KristenDalton.com. Yeah, I was looking yeah. at some of this stuff, like the KD series you got on here. It's pretty interesting art. I'm an artist myself, so I really got to say I admire some of the color work on here. Thank you. I like that you say that because color is one of the things I spend the most time on. I'll I'll take three months to do layering of colors. I use these old Holland paints, and sometimes I mix my own paints with pigments and gaukids and gamsoles. And so yeah, I I I love the depth of color and working with old artist colors and things like that. And and you might have seen I did that whole series of skulls. And I don't know if it has all of them, but I did a series of you know creepy old religious men from all over the world from all different religions and but mostly I've painted and drawn skulls and big eyes since I'm very young so are you in the uh, Mexican sugar crystal skulls yes I actually do have a couple of crystal skulls nice call nice. you're so smart duck man totally upstaging me sorry <laughs> 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 we always agree it's, it's really nice art, I gotta say. I mean, I don't want to say it's like creepy, but some of it, like I got a picture right here. I just pulled up of an old uh, religious figure, and you know, I'm kind of scared of the Pope myself. No offense to anybody out there, but this one is kind of, you know, it's got the snakes on the staff and everything, yeah. and, the, and the guy's eyes are kind of, you know, haunted. So it's good. yeah. It's good. All of the paintings have sort of a haunting, you can call them creepy, but I find them like they're moody. They're moody and dark and mysterious, but also, I don't know, just deep. It's, um, when you see them in person, they all have a bit of that same style. But yeah, I like that a lot. They have Eyes a nice are most mystique. important. Hmm? They have a nice mystique to them. That's right. There's a good word. You Thank said, you very much. I appreciate that. Good oh, you're welcome. When you said you like, uh, you know, each movie you want to get better and you want to grow, uh, would you like to use some of some of your, uh, your your creative side and your artwork in some of your movies? Oh, absolutely. There's, there's a painting of one of my friends that's in the cottage that's in... Um, uh, Marissa O'Mara, her bedroom, the girl, the older teenage daughter who plays sort of the snarky teenage uh, stepdaughter. In her bedroom, there's a big painting with white eyes of a redhead, um, and it's a very cool painting from a friend of mine that I put in the film, Shannon. Nice. Well, what has so. been like the um, the f the fan response been so far for the cottage? You know, it's been great, actually. For making my first real film, really, that is sold all over the world, it's been pretty good. You know, I've been actually really pleasantly surprised. I mean, there's always going to be um, a few people that don't like it, but I'd say definitely the majority of, re of reviews and from fans that I've heard has been really good. So I'm super excited. I mean, we had the red carpet premiere. It was a huge turnout. It was and People were you know, yelling and laughing and clapping and cheering. So I think it went well. I was really happy. How fulfilling is that to see something that you, uh, you know, you created, not just as the actor in it, but actress in it, but uh, something you thought of, you produced, and then to finally see the, the finished product and people watching it? 
oh man, there's no better feeling of doing what you love to do and being able to bring in like uh, bring in others who so love doing the same thing and working together as a family and all creating this together because it takes every single person on the set is equally important. I mean, couldn't uh, each person done it without? And so it feels great to do that. I I love it. I serve for people that you see are have great integrity and work ethic and who really passion for it and being able to bring all those people together and make something and sell it and know that you're going to keep doing it and keep getting better and learning and growing is the best feeling you could ever have. I just can't imagine doing anything else. I'm so happy. I'm, I was in the middle of filming a movie when I had to go to the premiere and I was just beside myself. I couldn't sleep. I was so happy. It's just so nice, you know, to have everybody working and all the people you love, you know, make it like this together. It feels really good. I would have to say the chat room is, is uh, claiming that Duckman is hitting on the guest. Duckman is sitting on the desk? Hitting on the guest. Hitting on you. Oh. That, that's, they're a bunch of perverts. Don't listen to them. <laughs> ah, the, the guests are getting sexy. I think so. Yes. Well, we want to thank you for coming on tonight. Everybody check out The Cottage. You can get it on DVD at Amazon. You can get it anywhere. You can buy DVDs. Get it on Video Demand. They just definitely yeah, and I've been putting up... I've been trying to post more uh, pictures on Facebook and trying to put up... I just met with someone today, putting up more personal pictures, behind-the-scenes pictures and content on the Facebook fan page. So go there as well. And, yeah, tell everyone to go out and watch it. It's just in, for Halloween. It's super spooky and fun. And, you know, thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you for coming That was on. excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And your phone All right. Died. Talk you to you guys break. later. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. This is Larry Zerner, Shelley from Friday 13 Part 3, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com.